My good people, what the hell is going on? This is Unnecessary Rambling. I'm Brandon Sylvia. Thank you all for stopping by. Thank you all for joining me here today to make some, uh, some, some pre-prediction predictions, if you will. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Shout out to my guy Santa Claus, but I'm not talking about Santa Claus today. I'm talking about old uh, Kelia Claus. We got the Game Awards coming up in, in a couple months, and then, you know... You may be asking yourself why I'm making a video predicting the nominees at the Game Awards in October and not, you know, in, in November, a more fitting month to do this. And to that, I would say, I don't know. You're, you're probably right. That would be a better time to do this. But I'm an eager beaver. I want to dive into this now. I want to talk about this now and, uh, you know, add a little spice to the mix. We'll, we'll, we'll even be predicting some of the games that haven't come out yet. Will they be able to slot their way into the final six, the top six, the big six nominees at the end of the year at the game awards this arbitrary award show that i really enjoy because most of it's not about awards so i made one of these videos last year discussing what i thought would be the final six nominees uh at, at for the game awards for game of the year at the game awards i guess it's the right way to say that but i wanted to mix it up a little bit here so so we're doing something a little bit different in a year as stacked as 20 23 we had to we had to get creative we had to mix it up a bit so let's hop on over here real quick so as you see here we are not just doing a, a a nice little round of predictions we got a tier maker all established and developed ready to go for you here because it's a stacked year and i really do think that uh we got 20 games that i jotted down that i think are actual legitimate contenders for game of the year which is crazy and I think when you compare the games on this list to like 2014 where Dragon Age Inquisition won, I think you can make a legitimate argument that at least out of the games that have released so far, every one of them could, you could make a real case for it winning game of the year over Dragon Age Inquisition. And at the very least, being one of the six nominees in 2014. So just a, a stupid, stupid stacked year. And, um... I feel the, the only way we can settle this is with with the, the glorious tier list. So as you see, we have the big six. There's no explanation needed. This, this is for the six games that I think will be nominated for Game of the Year. We have the bubble. These are the games that, that you know, they're, they're close to being in that big six, but, but not quite sure. And then we have the unlikelies where it's unlikely. And do keep in mind... This is not based off of my opinion on these games. This is based off of what I think the reviewers, what I think the the voters, what I think their opinions are on these games and where I see their votes going for these games. So there's layers within the layers to this shit. This is some uh, deep investigative analysis here. So uh, you're welcome. But do stick around. Hit the subscribe button and all that good stuff because at the end of the year I will be doing my own personal game of the year ranking. Ranking every game that I played in 2023. So you're not going to want to miss that, I guess. All right, so let's start this thing off. We have Baldur's Gate 3 out the gate. It's the big six. We have Tears of the Kingdom out the gate. It's in the big six. These two games are undeniably going to be in the final six for uh, the, the game of the year, you know, contendees, the game of the year nominees, whatever the hell you want to call it. And just looking at this, how all of this fell in 2023, Baldur's Gate 3, first, you know, real like mainline numbered Baldur's Gate game since early 2000s, whenever Baldur's Gate 2 came out, like 2001 or some shit. Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Obviously, we knew a new Zelda game was going to come out, but the fact that it fell into 2023 with all this other shit. Uh, Starfield, the first real BGS title since Fallout 4. Uh, Diablo 4, the first real Diablo game since 2011 or whenever the hell Diablo 3 came out. Final Fantasy 16, the first non-remake mainline Final Fantasy title since, I, I think, 2015 as well. Um, Armored Core 6 returning, you know, from soft going back to Armored Core for the first time since like early or mid PlayStation 3, 360 generation. Hogwarts Legacy, you know, you're, you're talking about 
uh, the franchise that these fans, Harry Potter fans, have been waiting for for so long to be adapted into a solid video game. And they have like their dream video game come to life in 2023. Alan Wake 2, a sequel to a game we never in a million years thought we were going to get a sequel to. Fucking uh, even like Super Mario Bros. Wonder, the first 2D Mario game in, in quite some time. Just crazy how all of this fell into 2023 i know the pandemic had a lot to do with that and yada 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 but wild how all of this fell into 2023 um resident evil 4 i you're talking about one of the greatest games of all time and it getting a remake and becoming even greater that right there is an anomaly in and of itself as well Ah, man, I don't know with a year so stacked if a remake is going to get into that big six nomination territory. I'm going to go the bubble for right now. Starfield, really divisive game. You know, it seems like the people, the, the critics, the reviewers who really dove deep into it found a lot to appreciate with it and was really enamored by the amount of systems on offer. But a lot of people didn't really jive with it in comparison to something like, uh, you know, Elder Scrolls or Fallout. And the the that comparison there, that is something that you have to weigh into effect here. Are people going to be willing to vote for this if they feel it is a downgrade from the the previous BGS titles? But, I mean, millions of people are playing this thing and, and enjoying it. And I, I think this is going to be a game that we look back on and, and we're a little bit more kind to in retrospect obviously mods and shit will help that but i'm gonna say i'm gonna say the bubble just a little bit too divisive don't know if it'll be in that big six territory but we'll we'll, you know we'll definitely adjust this as we go on but let's start rapid fire running through these diablo 4 the monetization elements and some of the the mishaps there i i think that's gonna go in the ah I'm going to go the bubble because I think that's like high eights on Metacritic still. And those are the people voting, you know, the people who were reviewing these games, the Metacritic scores that you see, you know, that that's a majority of who's voting for this end of the year award show. So I'm going to put it in the bubble, but definitely on the lower end of the bubble. Spider-Man 2. So we come to our first game that has not released yet. And we only have a couple games that, that haven't released yet. I think only like three or four here. So... Spider-Man 2, if it's more of the same, if it's more of 2018, if it's more of Miles Morales, I don't think it will get nominated in a year so stacked. But I just have a feeling that Insomniac has something up their sleeve. I don't think they're going to put a number two on this and have it just feel kind of similar to the first two games. You know what I mean? I think that with it being the, the big sequel to that first game like listen i love the comfort food i love I, I i'm down to play just more of the same but i just have a feeling it's not going to be that and we'll, we'll throw it in the bubble for now because it's going to come down to that it's going to come down to if it surprises critics in any real meaningful way or if it is just more of that same high 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 quality comfort food and we've seen a lot of the improvements with you know the bronx and queens and the different traversal methods and shit like that and, you know, some of the different combat uh, encounters and combat and ability, abilities that you're going to get access to in Spider-Man 2. But I think it's really going to come down to, like, a, a one real big holy shit moment. I've been talking about it a hundred times. But if you do have a even a 30-minute, a 20-minute slice of the game where you get to play as Venom, that'll be, like, the one thing that pushes it over the top. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. We'll see when we get to the end of the list. Final Fantasy 16 similar to Starfield, really, really divisive. You know, a lot of the fans love it, and people like me who like this new approach, the character action, blending that into the Final Fantasy ethos, like, it it works for me, but I know it does not work for a lot of people, and a lot of the, the core Final Fantasy old-school traditionalists are like, man, no, absolutely not. Give me back to, give me back to old-school Final Fantasy, which... I, I, you know, everybody has their own opinion on that. I think the divisive nature of it, similar to Starfield, I think puts it somewhere in the lower end of the bubble. Still a possibility, but I think the lower end of the bubble. Hogwarts Legacy, unfortunately, it's not going to 
Very, very unlikely. I think it's undeniably, you can make an argument that it's one of the six best games of the year. It's a great, great video game. But all the fucking bullshit, hoopla, you know, controversy surrounding the game that doesn't really have anything to do with the developers and the, the merit of the actual game, which is so unfortunate for that team having a breakout hit. Um, Avalanche never made a game on this scale in their history. This should be their crowning achievement from, you know, like that GTA 2 to GTA 3 leap. This should be what, and, and let me be very, very clear. This is such a small, a uh, small, small percentage of the people who played the game that are complaining about it. I mean, this thing is, I think it's one of, if not the best selling games of 2023. So it's, it, it is selling like absolute hotcakes. And I, I think Avalanche will have their big moment of like, holy shit, you know, we, we can now achieve things and try things in development that were not possible before the release of Hogwarts Legacy. So shout out to the team. They made it, they made an excellent, excellent video game, but unlikely just due to the controversy. I don't think people will vote it in. Armored Core 6, I will go... I mean, you know, you look at 2019 and 2022. I, it did Yeah, Sekiro won in 2019, Game of the Year, if I'm not mistaken. So 2019 and 2022, FromSoft wins Game of the Year. I, I mean... Uh, Armored Core 6, I, Armored Core for the longest time had never broken out of like that 7 out of 10 range. And now this is sitting high 8s, I believe, on Metacritic. I I wonder if the mech angle there makes it a little bit more niche. I'm going to go the bubble, though. I'm, I'm going to go the bubble. I, 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 I think it's closer than we might expect just based off of that from soft fervor. Here's a really interesting one. Alan Wake 2, um, once again, uh, one of the, the few games on this list that has not released yet, so we're, we're having to predict a couple layers deeper here. I, I actually, I thought about it at first, like not even including this on the list, and then I saw the previews come out, and I was like, holy shit. I heard people saying it was like, it, it felt better in terms of moment-to-moment -moment gameplay than something like Resident Evil 2, the remake. And, you know, it's drawing direct inspiration from that. So if it's better combat mechanics than Resident Evil 2, the remake, which is incredible on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and then adding on top the insanity, the psychological terror that Remedy can inflict on our brain, like, this, th dude, dude, Alan Wake 2, Remedy might be... They might be gearing up for a huge release, like an unprecedented release. Because, I mean, Control was a lot of people's game of the year in 2019. That's one of my favorite games of the year in 2019. And I could really see, because the combat was so damn good in Control. And that was like one of the big criticisms with Alan Wake, the original. So if they clean that up and deliver, because Alan Wake 1, the story is great. Control, the story is great. Like... If they can deliver a solid, solid narrative, which I think they're going to do, and then on top of that, damn good gameplay, dude, Alan Wake 2, I'm, I'm, this might be crazy. I'm throwing Alan Wake 2 in the big six. I have a feeling that this is going to be Remedy's like, drop the mic, I'm here type moment. Street Fighter 6, unfortunately, I don't, I, I just... I don't think the the fighting game community necessarily translates to the people who were voting on this. Like I just I'm not saying it's a niche genre. I don't necessarily think that, but in comparison to a lot of the other games on this list in the in the genres that they occupy, I feel like it is a little bit more niche, but Mortal Kombat the the fighting game genre this year or the fighting game category this year, that's going to be a bloodbath. Street Fighter 6 versus MK1 both High, I, I think Street Fighter 6 might be like nines, low nines on Metacritic. And then Mortal Kombat 1, really high eights. So that's going to be a bloodbath. But yeah, I, I don't think either of them make it to the, you know, final six nominees. Ooh, we got a real tough one here. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So the interesting thing about this is that I think it's undeniably one of the best games of the year. But if you played this 
at launch on PC, which I'm sure a lot of these critics who are going to be voting for Game of the Year, I'm sure a lot of them played it at launch on PC and probably haven't gone back to it since, and they still have that sour taste in their mouth from that disastrous launch, which, you know, that is all fine and well, in my opinion. I don't think they should have to go back to this and reevaluate it. That's the game that you put out on launch. That's the game that you fucking, you know, you deliver to people, and that's the impression that they hold on the game. And then I, you, you can't really argue with that. So I think it's going to kind of come down to that split. The people who played it on PC versus the people who played it on PS5 and Series X and had a much better, much more stable uh, experience playing through Jedi Survivor. I played it on PS5, had next to no issues with it. I thought it was a fucking incredible video game. I it, It's for sure, for sure in my top five of the year. But... Ooh, I'm going to say unlikely just because of that split with the, the PC audience there. Dead Space Remake, I, I think I would go unlikely. I think if we're going to get one of the remakes to pop up in the top six, which you don't necessarily only have to have one, but if we're going to get one, it's going to be Resident Evil 4. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, mm, that is really tough because I don't think that there's been a 2D game. I'm trying to think of the last 2D game that was nominated at the Game Awards. I, I can't even think of one off the top of my head that, that has been nominated in the past few years. So it, it's fighting a real uphill battle, but you got to factor in the Nintendo essence. The Nintendo factor is going to play a huge role in this. And I, I think I've seen a couple previews where people are talking about this as like far and away the best 2D Mario game in a long ass time. So... I'm going to say the bubble, man. The Nintendo factor is real. The Nintendo factor is real. But it is definitely fighting an uphill battle just being a, a 2D game in general. Hi-Fi Rush, it, probably unlikely. It's a freaking excellent game. But I don't think it necessarily has that mainstream appeal like some of these other titles. Pikmin 4. And actually, we'll just talk about these next four all in general because I think they're in a somewhat similar camp. Uh, Pikmin 4, I think, is around like an 80, like mid 8s Metacritic. Dave the Diver is sitting at a 90 on Metacritic right now. And then Sea of Stars, I think, is at an 88. Octopath Traveler at an 84. They're all a little bit more niche. I would say Pikmin 4 is probably the least niche of the bunch. So we'll go ahead and throw that in. Uh, Dave the Diver, I mean, being rated a a as a fucking 9 out of 10, I think it has like 50 reviews as well. So this isn't just a very small sample size. People love this game. Uh, Octopath Traveler 2, probably uh, uh, the least likely of the bunch. Sea of Stars, I mean, this is really appealing to people's, you know, uh, SNES kind of early 90s JRPG nostalgia. I... I, ah, I'm going to throw it in the bubble. We're definitely going to have to sort this bubble out. Dave the Diver, I think it might be a little bit too niche, unfortunately, but... I don't know, man. You're, you're talking about fucking a nine out of ten with 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 f over fifty reviews. Uh, let's throw it in the bubble. All right, so uh, we gotta we gotta pick three games out of this bubble now to get us to our final six nominees, and uh, I'm gonna go RE4 out the gate. I'm gonna go RE4 as one of the six or one of the the three out of the bubble to make up the final six and the reason i'm going to throw it in there is because i i think from a pure moment to moment basis you can make the argument that this might be the most fun game and the most replayable game of the year and once again i'm trying to set my own bias aside but it's just so damn fun and the amount of people who've already like played and finished this game and have the warm kind of comforting feelings of nostalgia from 2005 being brought back to life in a in a beautiful package in 2023 i i feel like that that holds a little bit of weight there so let's throw re4 in there two survival horror games in one year being nominated for game of the year in the final six I don't know. I mean, I feel like if, if two of the best games of the year, two of the top six games of the year are survival horror games, I don't think you should have some sort of genre limitation or anything like that. So let, let's let's throw RE4 into the mix there. I do wonder and, and kind of worry 
if people on their when they're filling out their ballot or whatever, I, I I do wonder if people will have that kind of internal struggle where they're like, I don't know if I want to jot down two survival horror games here, but uh, I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll throw in Resident Evil Four into the mix here. Now we got to pick out two more titles from the bubble. I wonder could there because we had like the weird stray popped up last year and people are like what the hell how the hell did stray get into the mix there so i do look across at some of the indies here like dave the diver or maybe sea of stars like is there any chance in a year so stacked that either of these games can get in just by like sheer quality factor alone um i mean a 90 on metacritic is staggering absolutely staggering that has to hold some some weight but dave the diver just might be a little bit too niche man i'm struggling to find these final two i'm gonna go spider-man 2 and for the final one i i'm gonna tell you where my brain's at my brain is in between starfield sea of stars and armored core 6 I, fuck, man, I really don't know. Because I feel like, out of all of these games, Sea of Stars might be, like, the most universally beloved of the three. But I do feel like, from a sheer player count, Starfield might have the the victory there. I feel like more people, just in general, have probably played Starfield. But have more people, by the time the voting comes around, have more people had enough time to really, like, dive into deep into those systems and and mess around with the mechanics and truly be able to appreciate the game or even took the time to try to appreciate the game that's the thing i kind of worry about a a little bit there with starfield man i really do not know what the hell the what the sixth game will be i'm i'm decently confident in these five maybe less so with spider-man 2 and i think that just comes from it not releasing but it I'm a lot more confident in Alan Wake 2 for some reason, which probably should be the other way around. But damn, what is the final game? I'll tell you where my heart wants to go. My heart wants to go Starfield. I think Starfield is one of the best six games of the year without a doubt. But my damn opinion holds no weight in this matter whatsoever. Oh, dude. I think I might go Sea of Stars. Just in terms of, you, you, it, it was on PlayStation Plus, it was on Game Pass, so you're talking about a lot of people who got to experience it. And I know, you know, most of these reviewers, most of these critics, pundits, uh, voters, whatever you want to call them, I, most of these people got early review codes and shit, so they don't have to resort to PS Plus, Game Pass, or purchasing the game or anything, but... You know, for those kind of few stragglers, the people who might not have got the review codes, but they're still able to vote someone else on the outlet got the review code, but they just hopped in for free through PS Plus, through Game Pass. The fact that it was on both services, I wonder if that accessibility, I wonder if that gets it into the final six. Dude, but the FromSoft fans are absolutely maniacs, man. And it seems that, like we talked about earlier, it's becoming much more prominent that these games are being featured in, you know, the the final six game of the year contenders with Sekiro and and Elden Ring. And so could it be two years back to back where a FromSoft game is nominated i don't think it'll win this year but I, i'm gonna go armor core 6 I, i'm not confident in that I'm, I'm thinking either armor core 6 or sea of stars is gonna be the the final slot unless super mario bros wonder just absolutely comes out and blows people the fuck away but for my lock it in prediction i'm going Baldur's gate 3 tears of the kingdom alan wake 2 re4 spider-man 2 and armored core 6 but damn now i'm looking at it, it's like there's not one new IP on this top six at all. And uh, fuck it, whatever, whatever. We're, we're leaving it there. I could, I could go on and, and debate myself internally all day about what's going to be that sixth game. But that's going to be my list there. But now we got to talk about the winner here. So I added another row above the big six here. And we got the winner category, the winner tier, where only one of these six games can move up. And uh, 
as much as I would like to to build some suspense here and and he, you know build this up as an epic battle that's gonna come down to the wire. And I think it could, but it's not between any of these four games. Uh, no disrespect, all great games, and well, we don't know about Spider Man Two and Alan Wake Two, but it probably will be great games. It's gonna come down to Baldur's Gate Three and Tears of the Kingdom, and I think. Unfortunately, I'm not saying unfortunately for the game's quality. I just think Tears of the Kingdom is a much more approachable, much more accessible, and in a, a more beloved franchise overall. You have to factor in the Nintendo factor into this equation. It's just, it's a reality, man. And I think that the winner for 2023's Game of the Year will be Tears of the the kingdom so yeah man that is my list hit me in the comments down below with yours let me know which six games you think will be nominated for game of the year and let me know which of the six you think will come out victorious appreciate y'all for watching stay tuned subscribe hit the like button share it with a buddy drop a comment for the algorithm do all that shit if you would like and i, I appreciate you guys and i will see you all in the next video goodbye